of the Alamo City, San Antonio. Mike, there's been so much hype, so much preparation in this game, talking about these two running backs, but when you look at Hansbard, over 2,000 yards, and Shaw, three straight years in the Big Ten, over 1,000 yards, those are unbelievable credentials. Ron, two great running backs and two teams that want to run the football, so you expect both defenses to try to get to an eight-man front on a lot of occasions and sometimes sneak the ninth defender in there to try to stop the run. Mike, let me ask you this. What happens if Hansbard gets stopped or if Shaw gets stopped or both. What is plan B for these two football teams? Well, third down is going to be the most important down on both teams. And when you look at Texas Tech, Zebby Lethridge, he hurts in a lot of different ways with the option, quarterback draws, scrambling. And then on the other side of the field, Matt Sherman, the quarterback was red hot in the last two ball games, started out on fire against Wisconsin and Minnesota, throwing the ball on third down. The key will be who moves the chains on third down. Now, Ron, I think the most important thing is both quarterbacks automatic and or checking off plays against a bad defense against eight man and nine man fronts get out of bad runs and get to a pass or get to something on the outside it's the big 12 against the big 10 that spells fun we'll be back with more from the sideline kevin winslow in the starting lineup after we pause for this we sure to kick it off and the 1996 edition of the Builder Square Animal Ball is underway. So Sherman comes out at quarterback, the junior 6'3", 207 pounds. And here are the starters on offense for Iowa tonight. Sherman at quarterback. And, of course, the guy that we always look for is number five, Cedric Shaw, the senior out of Austin LBJ. At fullback will be number 85, Michael Berger. You can see him right there. He's a converted tight end. The wide receivers, well, we'll check them in just a moment as the Hawks are about to come to the line of scrimmage and uh, have this first offensive play of the night. Berger, the fullback in motion. We had movement in the line, and it looked like Reichel, the left guard, came out of his stance, number 76. Dead ball. Movement prior to the snap. False start on the offense. Five yards. First down. So that gives us an opportunity to check the lineup. Sherman, Cedric Shaw, and Michael Berger. Now, the wide receivers, and we'll see a number of them, Odoms and Dwight, though. And Odoms and Shaw played high school football together. Chris Knipper is the tight end. The offensive line up front, this is a very good group, particularly Ross Verba, number 73, out of West Des Moines. Reichel, Reardon, Rose, and McKinney rounding out that group. Comes across the 17 out to the 18 yard line and here are the starters on defense for the Texas Tech Red Raiders tonight. The folks who play in that down group. Rieger, Aversham gets the start tonight ahead of Chandler McGuire. And watch number 96, Tony Daniels. Very active. This is an excellent defensive lineman. The linebackers, Robert Johnson, he is the heart and soul of his defense. Butler and Donahue, the other linebackers. And in the secondary, Brown, Johnson, Turner, and Tony Darden. Darden and Johnson uh, will have their hands full tonight as far as covering speedy wideouts, Dwight and also Odoms. But they'll go who got a hand on him, and Mike, they're going to scrimmage with a third down and long. Ron, this is a tough defense to start off running against because it's an eight-man front. They've got eight people in the box. It's tough, and Matt Sherman likes to start the ball game throwing the football. He was 10 straight versus Wisconsin, 11 straight completions versus Minnesota. Said he got a lot of confidence from throwing a lot of short passes early in the game. But the thing they want to do, I think, Mike, to be more successful is to throw maybe on first down and not throw when Texas Tech yeah, dictates it as they have here. You don't want to be in third and long against this Texas Tech defense. They blitz you from either side. they got four men on both sides. 11 yards to pick up the first down. Pressure on Sherman. Screen wasn't there, and he just throws it away. Almost intercepted. Brown is the man who was putting the pressure on. And Iowa looked totally out of sync on that series. Well, a bad series from start to finish by jumping offside. Illegal procedure. You're in bad shape right off the bat. Mike, we talked in the, in the warm-up watching Nick Gallery, number 46, as you look at Daniels going to the bench. Led the Big Ten the last two years in punting, and this young man can really set sail. He doesn't need any wind behind him. This is end over end. As soon as they brag on him, he... Uh, Kicks it but back to the 35 and now the 30. Going the wrong direction. Turned around. 
Dubuck with great coverage by Iowa is going to be stopped at the 24 yard line. So let's take a look at the Red Raiders. This is the way they will scrimmage. Zebby Lethridge at quarterback, hand sparred, of course, and Ryan Jones, the fullback, rarely does he carry. He's a blocker. The wide receivers, and we'll see a total of six tonight, but Hart and Field Scoble will start the ball game. Alleman is the tight end. At the offensive line, this is a good, solid group, but particularly Ben Kaufman, number 75, the senior out of Edinburgh, Texas. Jay Pugh is the starter at center, and we were just told that he also will handle the long snaps tonight. Option on the first play. Comes back to Hansbard. They try to corral him, and he turns it back inside at the 30. It'll be a gain of seven. Matt Hughes defensively, and here's the way the Hawkeyes line it up defensively. They go with a five front. Chambers, DeVries, Klein, LaFleur, and Ennis Enge. And I'll tell you, Ennis Enge and DeVries will call both of their names a lot tonight. The linebackers, both, they are big fellows and tough against the run. And Hughes and Rollins. And in the secondary, Tom Knight, certainly the class of this group. In fact, a lot of the pro scouts say he is one of the best two or three corners in America. Second and short. Play action as... Gets outside, passes, intercepted at the 45-yard line by Plez Atkins, and he just threw it right to him. Ronzebi Lethridge was moving to the left side and never got his body squared to the line of scrimmage. He was thrown across his body, and when you throw across your body, most times it's going to be an interception. Plez Atkins, number 23, is just going to sit on this route. There's the play action fake to watch. He never is able to get his shoulders turned. And he throws across his body, his legs, and there's the interception. And that was DeVries. You see number 94, Mike. He is the one who was forcing him to rush and get that pass away. So the first big break of the night goes to the Hawkeyes of Iowa as they scrimmage from the 39. Quick look in pass. They got Dwight right over the middle. Breaks one tackle inside the 30, and he's down to the 26. Dane Johnson holding on, but it's good for 13 yards. When you see an eight-man front, sometimes when you go to a double a slot right here like this, Tim Dwight is not covered to the inside. Both linebackers taking the fake. Tim Dwight did a little quick look in pass. Dane Johnson on the tackle. Damon Gibson, number 18, checks into the lineup as you look at the junior. Last year did not run track. He wanted to uh, get to spring football, but Tim Dwight says this year he will run track at Iowa, and he is outstanding at that. That's Dwight in motion to the top of the screen. Delay. Shaw breaks out of it. He's open. 20, 15, at the 10, at the 5-yard line, out of bounds. They're going to say at the 3, Dane Johnson got it. 24 yards on the run. When we talked to the Texas Tech players the other day, especially Tony Daniels, a defensive lineman, they said you have to wrap Cedric Shaw up because he's so strong in the lower body, you can't bring him down. You see they have some shots at tackling him. Corey Chandler misses him, and he shows you the leg strength that he has, breaks to the outside, down the corner. Dane Johnson finally saved the touchdown. They have spotted the ball at the two. Ross Verba, number 73, with an excellent block. And Shaw already on three carries has 28 yards. He'll get it again to the right side, one foot away, but did not get into scores. Ryan Donahue puts the stopper on him. You have a turnover and you give the ball inside the 50-yard line. Your defense needs to come up big and then and, and make the stop. And they had Cedric Shaw in the backfield, Rod. Had him so for they, a loss. And they, and they blew the opportunity to stop this Iowa offense. Now they've got to show it down the goal line. Second down and goal. Straight ahead, quarterback sneak, touchdown Sherman. And the Iowa Hawkeyes take advantage of a Lethridge interception and with 11-21 showing on the scoreboard, have put it in for the first touchdown of the night. This is the run. Cedric Shaw, they had him stopped on a draw. 
got penetration, a couple of arm tackles, missed him. Ryan Donahue was, Donahue was the last one, and then he's down the sidelines, putting his team in good field position. Snap goes over the holder's head. It is loose back at the 37, and Bromert does the smart thing. He gets on top of it and recovers it. So let's take a timeout. A lot of fireworks early. Six to nothing for Diane Mitchell. Mark Mitchell uh, is a reserve linebacker uh, on this football team. Diane Mitchell, his mom, was killed in a car wreck coming down here to this football game from Iowa City. This happened about 48 hours ago. And uh, in response by the team, she was a well-respected and loved mom of this team. In fact, back in August, uh, during the kickoff classic, uh, the Mitchells had a barbecue at their house. They invited the entire team, and she was one that constantly entertained these kids and fed them after hunting trips and what have you. They have stripped their helmets tonight uh, in honor of her. And, uh, and we send our regards to the family tonight. Obviously, Mark Mitchell not here for this ball game this evening. Hurley with the kick, and this will go out of the back of the end zone. So Texas Tech gets an opportunity. Mike, I want, I'm anxious to see. I know it is so early in this ball game, but I think this is a huge series right here as far as this guy is concerned because they had a lot of momentum. They got the defensive stop down here that they wanted. They had very good field positions to start, and then they pick up eight yards on the first play, and then they throw the interception. Ron, remember, last year, as he set a Southwest Conference record with 211 consecutive passes without an interception. So, Zebby Lethridge is a good quarterback. I don't think he's going to let that play bother him. You see, the Red Raiders will do this a lot. They will sprint to the line of scrimmage, and they will snap the ball quickly. Lethridge hit in the backfield. That's Ennis Inge. Bill Ennisinge, a senior out of Kirkwood, Missouri, who comes across and hits him behind the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a loss of very close to five yards in the foot. You can see exactly what I was trying to do. They want to make sure that if Byron Hansbard's going to run the football, he's going to run it up inside. They're not going to let him outside. Bill Ennisinge was able to square his body and not allow Hansbard outside. Now that's what Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, talked at length about yesterday. He said we, it would be a long night if we allow him to get outside. Quick pass, Scoble right over the middle. Just a little too far as he led him. Damian Robinson was in the vicinity, but uh, field Scoble was open. Couldn't hold on, and all of a sudden now Texas Tech confronted with a third down, and they need 15 yards to hold on to it. What Texas Tech chooses to do is they script their first 10 plays, so they're trying to show Iowa a lot of different formations and trying to give their uh, coaches up here in the press box a guide of what to do after 10 plays with the adjustments Iowa shows on each formation. Rick Dykes at the far end. He is the offensive coordinator and obviously the son of Spike Dykes. Lethridge, quarterback draw. He gets tagged at the 18 by Matt Hughes and knocked down. Lethridge probably should have taken it to the outside. He cut back into the tackle. Yeah, he really should have. He should have read the block a little bit better. Jay Pugh, number 63, the center, who had it pinned inside. And if he'd have broke outside, picked up more yardage. Buddy Ward, the referee Illegal tonight. Illegal motion on the offense. Decline, fourth down. So, Mike, this brings up a situation. Now, Iowa uses a dual safety set, but the guy that you got to watch is number six. Ron, the reason they put two back there, most teams put one, and you can kick the ball away from one returner back there. But when you have two, it's going to be fielded. And Iowa's a big punt return football team. you got to always keep an eye and make sure you know where number six is. Here's the kick by Hernandez. Line drive, and it's Dwight. Tries to get outside on the right. Retreats, and he'll turn the corner. Takes it inside the 45 and down to the 43-yard line. 12 yards on the return by the Dane Nation. Johnson on the special teams made the stop on him. Well, when you, again, when you have such an exciting player like Tim Dwight, uh, the, the punt is going to be an exciting play tonight. So the Iowa Hawkeyes got stopped on the opening series and had to punt from deep in their own territory. But with Gallery's big kick and then the interception, and now this guy right here, they've had advantage as far as field position. Well, as you said, oh, you, when Matt Sherman threw that ball on first down, gave them a little confidence, and they broke the long run. Straight up the 
Middleton. Sherman inside the 35. Shaw, I beg your pardon. Dane Johnson making the tackle, the free safety. And that is a gain of very close to 10 yards on the play. Ron, you know Cedric Shaw's all fired up. John Goodner, he, he's the nearest on your screen, the defensive coordinator. Has to find a way to stop Cedric Shaw. Coming back home here, you talked to him the other day about his request for tickets, and he said, said he was excited that finally some members of his family were going to get to see him play in person. That's right. He said uh, over 50 tickets. He said a lot of them couldn't make that trip all the way up to Iowa City, and some of them were seeing him for the first time in person. Short yardage. He'll get the handoff this time. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be either no gain or a loss of one. Robert Johnson and Ryan Donahue combining on the stop. Ron, it's interesting. John Goodner, the defensive coordinator, told us the other day, he said, I walked up beside Cedric Shaw at the lunch, and I wanted to see how big he was <laughs> because he said, I don't think he was 6'1", 195. He said, he's bigger than that. He said he's 220 or 225, and they showed tape to his defensive team of several of his runs during the year and talked about wrapping up and bringing him down, and right off the bat, he makes a play and gets a big run against the Texas Tech defense. Looks like he, he's rotating that arm. Octavian Banks has come in and given him a breather here for a second. Flags are down, and this one will come back. And I'll tell you, Tavian Banks, number 22, a junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa, has some good credentials of his own, would start for most people. And, Ron, the coaches say he's like... Dead ball, illegal snap on the offense, five yards, third, third down. He's a lot like Ronnie Harmon, the former great player at Iowa. In the game that he started against Penn State this year, he had 26 rushing attempts for 116 yards. So very, very capable replacement. Well, and you see that nine touchdowns and an average of almost five yards per carry. If you just joined us, six to nothing. Iowa, they took advantage of an interception off Zebby Lethridge and scored on their last sequence. Right now, they've got a third down, and they need the 32. complete to Dwight short of the first down it's Tony Darden who gets over to make the hit on him and let's see they're going to spot him about a yard and a half shy Ron, I think this four down territory for Iowa because you know they feel like they have a big offensive line they come out of the Big Ten a big running conference Tony Darden really made a good tackle there Chris Knipper one of the tight ends checks into the lineup Iowa will go for it fourth down about a yard and a half they need to take it to the 32. They want to throw it ball is tipped and knocked down and Texas Tech will take it over. Robert Johnson got his hand up. Robert Johnson is an outside linebacker, and he's 5'11", 194. But in the eight-man front, he's a, a mix between a linebacker and a corner, and most like a strong safety. He made the play on Matt Sherman. Like he almost came up with an interception. So let's take a timeout. 7.31. Left. We'll be right back. They pull the guards, and here comes Hansbury to try to get him outside, and that's a nice job by Iowa as Chambers gets outside to grab on him along with Atkins, and he will have a gain of maybe two on the play. But, Ron, if Texas Tech's going to win this football game, Byron Hansbard has to be main player in their offense. They'd like for him to carry it 15, 20 times in the first half. They have a student manager on the sideline checking off the amount of times he touches the football. When you got a great player, you got to put it in his hands. And for people to sit there at home and say, well, that's only good for a yard and a half, two yards. That's right, but the next one he may bust for 70, so you just keep yeah, giving it to him. He's capable at any time. You pitch it back, this time to the open side of the field. Puts a head down across the 40. And let's check down on the sideline with Kellen Winslow. Kellen. Well, Ron, an update on Cedric Shaw. He has a bruised shoulder. He shook it off. He's going to be fine. He's going to go back into the ball game. Thanks, Kellen. I, you know, this is one of those things where I think you probably have to pull his arm off to keep him out of this football game because he's 70 miles from home and getting the chance, as Mike mentioned just a while ago, to play in person for uh, some folks, some relatives and friends that have not seen him play in college in person. No, and he's got to pay for those tickets, so he's going to make <laughs> sure he stays in this football game. Two tight ends. Jason and Alamon on the third down and short. And Hansbard close, but I don't know. 
He is around the 43-yard line, and it's Rollins and Klein who combined on the stop. And Michael, I don't know if he got it. Do you punt it away? I think if you, you don't make it here, you punt the football away. And they ran against a nine-man front there of Iowa. Iowa had nine people. As you see the line movement, a little slant to the tight inside. Vernon Rollins, number 56. Here's the front, looking at nine people. There's a safety in the backfield back there, but nine people loading up. That was a play in a phone booth. Now there you see it. It's about 18 inches. So the first major decision for Spike Dykes tonight. And he's going to go for it. No movement by this. Well, I take it back. Now I've got mass movement. Uh, I, I think he's line. only got one choice. I fans, think you're right. fans can boo all they want to, but uh, he's got one choice there. That's punt the football. And it's interesting, though, when you have to punt, punt it to Tim Knight, to Tim Dwight, such a tough punt returner. He was talking to his punter the other day. He said, just punt it as long and hard and pray that you don't have to tackle him. <laughs> He also said, I said, Spike, can you kick it away from him? He said, no, if we tried that, we'd kick it to him every time. Jeremy Hernandez, a sophomore out of middle of Texas, waits for the snap back at the 30. Here's his kick, end over end, and it is returnable. Here's Dwight. Runs into his own man. Iowa will be scrimmaging from their 25-yard line. 42 yards in the punt and 11 on the return. So let's take a timeout. Six to nothing. The Hawkeyes on top. We'll be right back after. Tim Dwight gets the punt return, and he trying to break it against all those white jerseys. Trying to run away from the white jerseys, and then he runs into his own player. Brett Chambers, number 47, and he gets up and he thinks, hey, I can run against these white jersey guys. <laughs> Black Mike, jerseys the, are my team. The expression, he got up and he, it's <laughs> like, hey, get a color chart. He just, you knocked my head off. And Chambers shaken up on the sideline after the play. So Texas Tech tries to get another defensive stop. Sherman to throw on first down. Lots of time. Dwight couldn't hold on. That was a catchable football right over the middle at the 40-yard line. And Taurus Rucker, number 89, put a little pressure on Matt Sherman just as he was about ready to throw that football. He had a lot of time. Tim Dwight, number six, just a low throw. Tony Darden on the coverage. Now, that's the coverage that Iowa likes. They like Tim Dwight versus Tony Darden. You know what else, Mike? That right there. I'm surprised he didn't go down to catch it, but he wanted to run with the football. And that's the reason he didn't go down to the turf to uh, come up with it. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. Sherman throws the swing pass. Shaw. Maybe one on the play, and it's a great job by Jody Brown. The senior out of Cross Plains gets outside to make the tackle on the speedy Shaw. Ron, he made a great play, Jody Brown. You talk about going outside. They're going to hit the screen over here to the right side. And number 30, Jody Brown just beats the block and then goes out and makes a good, sure-handed tackle against Cedric Shaw. Not an easy thing. Third down, the line to make the 35-yard line. Six to nothing, Iowa leads. Just under five minutes to play, opening quarter. Here comes the corner blitz. Sherman under pressure, and they're going to get him. And that's Brown again. Brought him off the corner. Ron, those same fans that were booing a little bit ago when the Spike Dykes punted the football are now cheering for him. And that's the reason you punt the football. You play, put your defense back on the field, and now you've got them all the way back inside the 15-yard line. So an excellent job by the defensive coordinator, John Goodner. Jody Brown coming on the blitz. No one picks him up. Cedric Shaw misses the block, and there's the sack. And now Texas Tech's in business. Gallery, and here comes his kick, and he boomed this one. Good heavens. The buck all the way back to the 23-yard line, and he'll take it out to the 35-yard line. What have we got, E? A 59-yard punt, 10 on the return. So you can see why he led the Big Ten the last two years in punting, as the buck had to get on his horse going the opposite direction. Ron, we've seen some good punters here in the bowl games. Brad Maynard of Ball State, I thought he was excellent. Maybe the best I've seen all year. This guy for Iowa. <laughs> Gallery can hit it, too. 
Tech wants to throw in first down. Got it complete, and that's Donnie Hart. Almost a 10-yard gain as he's bumped out at the 44. And I'll tell you about Donnie Hart. Against K-State, he suffered a concussion. That they, the coaches say he wasn't right for like five weeks, Mike. No, and he came on late in the season. Uh, really is starting to come into his own here at the end of the season. Made a nice catch there. And Texas Tech run a lot like Iowa. They want to run the football, but first down is their best passing down also. No question. Against Texas, against the Longhorns, Hart had 240 yards receiving. You know, DeVries standing back and uh, small talking with Zebby Lethridge. We've had a lot of motion. Illegal procedure in this game already. The layoff. Dead ball. Movement prior to the snap on the offense. Five yards. The second down. Right guard is uh, moving. Shane Dunn, number 68. See his hand go up in the air. Movement uh, drawing the defense. Offsides. So Spike Dykes looks up and says, hey, guys, we had a second down and very short. Now we have a second down, and we need about six and a half to seven to pick up the first down. This is one of the really likable guys in college football. He is uh, he's a fun fella. Gets back to Hansbar. Try to get him outside. Breaks one, breaks two. He'll have the first down. Matt Hughes will knock him down, but it's a gain of almost 10 on the play. And the longest gainer of the night by Hansbar. Well, he gave him a different formation. Texas Tech came out with a bunch formation where you put three receivers together and ran the pitch right to it. Left side, one back set. Still get the good block by Ryan Jones. When you got a great tailback, you always find a good blocking fullback. And number 43, Ryan Jones, is just that. Hayden Fry said day before yesterday when we did the interview with him that I said, what's the difference? You face some great running backs this year. He said, beyond a doubt, Hansbart is the fastest. But that's what we have to be careful of. We get the screen to him, gets by Ennis Ange, and then Ennis Ange comes back and makes the tackle. That's a nice second effort on his part because if he doesn't, Hansbart might have been able to wiggle his way down the sidelines. And Hayden Fry said he's the fastest running back. You talked about the other day, Ron. They've had success in Iowa's defense against good running backs. Darnell Autry had 240 yards, but the rest of them, they held pretty well. Pepe Pearson against Ohio State. They shut him down. The Great Dane at Wisconsin. Also uh, Enos uh, for Penn State. As you mentioned, uh, the Northwestern game, and I'm sure that Spike and have looked at that tape long and hard to see what they did. It's a big tape because they can study how Iowa adjusted to all the formations Northwestern was showing you. Well, here's the option play. Lethridge will take it for about five yards, and it's Vernon Rollins who is there to put the stop on him, and now with third down at about four. Ron, I talked about early in the open about the quarterback that makes the best adjustment tonight against both these eight-man and nine-man fronts is going to be the successful quarterback of checking off and getting out of a bad play. And Zebby Lethridge just did that on that play because he saw an eight-man front, a bear look that uh, Mike Ditka made so famous in Chicago. And one of the things you do is go right to the option when you see that defense. Well, they're all of two on third down conversions. And I'll tell you, from where they've spotted the football, it's closer to third down and five. The line to make, the 42. Lethridge wants to throw. Sets in the pocket, gets it complete, and that is enough for the first down. Donnie Hart with his second reception of the night, and he's right on the yard marker. It's Tom Knight, who is the best of the cover guys for Iowa, gets it. Well, Spike Dykes, when he talks about his quarterback, Zebby Lethridge, he said he's great on third down. Now, here's a good throw to Donnie Hart. Pretty good coverage by Tom Knight, an excellent defensive back out of the Big Ten. You know, Mike, probably that is the biggest thing that you can say about Lethridge is Spike said, I don't know how they come up with the, the, the average as far as rating quarterbacks, but he said, I know one thing, on third down, I've never had a quarterback who was any better than Zebby Lethridge. And he said he's a fierce competitor. Count over the option, Lethridge, five yards, maybe six. That's LaFleur and Rollins again. And now, all of a sudden, you get the feeling that this Tech offense is more in sync. Well, I was going to say, Ron, that you, we talked about the interception right off the bat. The layoff in a bowl game sometimes affects you. And now it looks like Zebby Lethridge is back at home at quarterback, running the option, uh, throwing the football, and making the adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's a little bit more comfortable right now in this ball game. And keep in mind one thing. Last year, 1995, Texas.
Texas Tech's time of possession per ball game, 27 minutes. They average 38 minutes on offense each game this year, primarily because of this guy. Hansbar will have the first down, cracking his way up the middle to the 29. Matt Hughes stops him, and an 11-minute changeover in one year is astronomical. It really is, Ron, and you look at Rick Dykes, the offensive coordinator. He has to feel good about the way the game is moving right now. Look at this blocking up front that springs Byron Hansbart up in the middle, but now it looks like option, pass the football, run inside with Byron Hansbart. They got it all going right now. Well, he's getting his touches now. Well, he really I is. Think that was what the ninth time that uh, one pass, eight rushes for Hansbart already in the ball game. On first down, Luckridge to throw, gets it out here in the flat, overthrown at the 23. Number six, Stacy Mitchell, who is not very big at all at 5'5", 150, a junior out of DeSoto. I think he's the third smallest player in Division I football this year, and it looked like his feet were going a little too fast for him right there. Couldn't control it, and that was stumbling as the ball was thrown to him. Same high school that uh, Hansbard went to, DeSoto. So it stops the clock with 44 seconds left in this first quarter. Iowa took it after the turnover, missed the extra point. They lead six to nothing. Hansbart turns it up, cuts it back to the middle, and is not going to get by LaFleur. If LaFleur is unable to grab him, then all of a sudden he's back to the middle and free. Well, when you look at Iowa, they get off blocks really well here as you see the ball pitched to Byron Hansbart. Now you look at the blocking by Texas Tech, but all of a sudden they're off the blocks and they're making the play. John LaFleur, as you talked about, round number 55 was blocked, got off the block, used his hands, made the tackle. So it's third down. Eight seconds, down to seven. This is the eighth play of the drive, and Leverage gets away. And he's got a man open down there. He's going to run it. Inside the 25, and it's going to be a fourth down at about six as Ortley made the tackle, and that is the final play of the opening quarter. So let's take a timeout. Iowa six, Texas Tech nothing. Rebound did not start off the season as the field goal kicker for Texas Tech, but they had some problems there. Kick is on the way. He's got the distance, but he is off to the right and no good. You know, Mike, this is something that Spike Dykes talked at length about because they have had special teams woes this year. For instance, Texas Tech against Nebraska. Low snap, they got a kick block. against Nebraska and a punt return. They had played them on a very even basis and then they gave up the punt return that Nebraska takes back for a touchdown. Well, back to the five yard line I should say and against K-State they snapped the ball over the punter's head and K-State scored a touchdown. Spike Dyke says that kind of play is unacceptable and I'm sure he's not pleased with what happened on that missed field goal tonight. Yeah, and Ron you look at uh, against Earth Texas and they had a field goal blocked in that ball game 38 well, 32 down. Georgia they missed a field goal and Georgia went the length of the field in a, a drive to beat them so as he said, they could have had a great year. And, you know, I, I mean, they think they've got things shored up now, but the funny thing about it is, I said, well, you're going to fire the special teams coach, and he, he looked kind of sheepishly at it. He is the special teams coach. Tough to fire him. He said, we've, uh, we've worked extra hard these last few weeks on special teams. <laughs> Sherman under pressure again. Can he get away? No, nope. he's sacked again, and this time Monte Rieger gets it. And that is a huge loss. That's going to be about 15 yards back to the 10. Ron, it still becomes a game of, I think, tonight the quarterbacks because both teams are similar in running the football. you got Cedric Shaw against Byron Hansbard, and I think it's a quarterback's game tonight. Matt Sherman didn't want to put this one up, didn't want to force the interception, but a long loss by Rager back uh, inside the 10-yard line. And, Ron, where they have... Both teams have been feeling so far in the first quarter is third downs. I don't think Iowa has uh, had a third down where they've been able to turn it into first down. No, nope, they're uh, 0 for 3. Line to make, they got to take it all the way out to the 35. They go with the running play. Right up the middle, Shaw 
out to the 24. Dane Johnson will make the tackle. Now, here's where the big weapon comes into effect. If Gallery gets away one of his routine kicks with that run right there, Texas Tech is still not going to have great field position. No, I think I'd line up my return people about 15 yards deeper. Well, I think that what they'll do is the coaches will tell them, back up a little bit. Now, this is a guy that's got a uh, heck of a leg, so you want to be able to field the ball as quickly as you can. Hardy with a 59-yarder tonight, and he booms this one. Clint Robertson signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 29 at the 30-yard line. So there's a timeout. Let's take it. 12:46 left until halftime. Iowa still by six. Feeds handsparred, eight touches, eight rushes for 28 yards, one reception for one yard. The numbers on him. That's the buck who resets from the left side over to the right. Gibb, the hands bar, turns it upfield. Has five, six, seven yards, and just like that, he's got close to eight on the play. And a flag is down. And it's going to be a procedure call. And I think that is the third procedure call against Texas Tech in this ball game tonight. in the illegal formation only six men on the line of scrimmage all that movement they got confused a little bit and all the movement they didn't have the seventh man on the line of scrimmage so that erases a very good gain by Hanspard and the penalty on instead of second down and short they got first down and 15 and you just feel that every time he touches the ball that something big can happen he's only asked 28 yards and eight carries but uh, he's been close a couple times you know plus the fact he has that extra gear there are times that you see him running up there and he's not running that hard and the next thing you know pow he's gone Leverage to throw he'll run up into the pocket and Iowa with a nice job of contain and is in makes the tackle on him. Well, that's what Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator, told his defensive lineman. When you rush up the field against a quarterback that can run like Zebby Lethridge, come under control. Because when he does decide to take off, you've got to break down in football position and make that tackle. Bill Ennis right there for the tackle. Tom Knight in on the tackle also. You know what's interesting? Kellen and I were, after we visited with this young man yesterday, we both said walking out of the room, if it was a choose-up game in the backyard, after the look in his eye, we'd choose him, Mike. <laughs> right over the middle, and he's got Scoble. Field Scoble to the 45-yard line, and this crowd comes alive as Damian Robinson makes the tackle. Well, Zeppi Lethridge hits Field Scoble right on the break in the post route. You're going to see him against Plez Atkins, number 23. He breaks the post. Little dig route, Field Scoble makes the catch, and Ron, not bad for a guy who started his career as a walk-on. Walk-on as a quarterback, and I ask, Spike really loves this kid. He's a great story. In fact, his family and football in the state of Texas actually synonymous. His daddy played quarterback at Texas Tech. His granddad really was Mr. Cotton Bowl. He ran it for five decades. Now he has graduated and uh, has taken the entrance exam from med school. Leverage all kind of time and they're going to rack him up. LaFleur will sack him back at the 50 yard line and it's the first time that Iowa has gotten to Lethridge tonight. Ron, but Tom Knight makes a great play in coverage on this play because what it looked like was going to happen was it was a hook and go to Donnie Hart, number 82, but Tom Knight just stayed back and covered it. Now watch on the uh, top of your screen, 82. He's going to try to curl. Now he takes off. Tom Knight runs step by step. He's behind him, but pretty good position. Second down at about 14. Lethridge feeding the pressure. Still, and he's going to be tackled at the 42 by DeVries. And I'll tell you, this is textbook as far as Iowa is concerned because you talk about breaking down and not allowing him to get outside. They are doing a picture-perfect job. Well, the play starts with Jared DeFries, number 94, getting a push up the field and getting in the face of Zebby Lethridge. Now, you see him right up inside there. Now, he forces the scramble. But now he's still being blocked. Now, he still waits. He's squared up, and now he makes the tackle on Zebby Lethridge. A nice play by Jared DeFries. 
Show with DeFries is tackled. It's now third down. The line of scrimmage to 41, and they've got to go all the way to the Hawkeye 35. Iowa leads it six to nothing. Under 10 to play first half. Lethbridge going to go long, looking incomplete at the 25. Damian Robinson was all over Donnie Hart. Ron, I don't know what they were looking at, but the, what I saw was pass interference by Damian Robinson. Of course, Spike Dykes is not going to argue. He says, get the punt team out there. Donnie Hart was running down the football field, number 82. Zebby Lethridge is going to try to put the ball up, hang it up, and number three, Damian Robinson just collides with Donnie Hart. So Hernandez to punt. Jay Pugh handling the long snaps, and as we mentioned, he hasn't done it all year. Normally, Kaufman does it. Kevin Ward did it some early in the year, but Spike said that Jay Pugh has uh, been looking good in practice, and he wanted him to do it. It's a dandy kick. He's going to hit at the two and go into the end zone. 59 yards in the kick, and now a couple of 59-yard jobs, and this Texas Tech crowd still voicing their opinion about the no interference call. Well, for up-to-the-minute sports news and highlights ESPN News, the first ever 24-hour all sports news network. To subscribe, call your local cable operator or satellite program provider. You know, Mike, we talked after the production meeting this morning. We were saying that so much has been made about the two running backs, but we both thought it's going to come down to these quarterbacks, and I think that's it. I think without a doubt it's going to come down to both of those who plays the best and that makes the fewest mistakes. Shaw hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's Jason Jones, number 90, who will stop him after a gain of only one. Jason Jones, a freshman out of Dallas, Texas, 6 one 3 14. He is spelling Cody McGuire, who is getting a breather right now. Just what we expected, though, as far as two defenses saying to two great running backs, you're not going to beat us. No, you're not going to beat us, and the quarterback's going to have to beat us. Either getting out of bad plays, making some plays, throwing the football, or scrambling around. Shaw stays in the block this time, and a pass thrown complete. That's Dwight out of bounds at the 32-yard line, and Shaw with a good job of the pickup on the blitz, but he took a pretty good shot, Mike. It really did, Ron, and a uh, good block by him, but the respect for Tim Dwight by the defensive backs from Texas Tech is evident that they're going to give him a lot of room on the outside. Matt Sherman's going to roll to the right, Cedric Shaw with a good block up inside, picking up the linebacker. Now you can see the cushion on the outside by Tony Dart, number 11. He just got so much respect for the speed of Tim Dwight. So it's a first down and a very big one for Iowa as they move it out to their 31-yard line. Sherman on first down. Gets the quick look in pass. There's Dwight again. Dwayne Price on the stop, and that's going to be an 11 and a half yard gain and a first down again for the Hawkeyes. I thought something interesting about Tim Dwight. He grew up in Iowa City, scored 43 touchdowns as a high school senior, but the coaches in Iowa were told about him when he was in the seventh grade. That's how good an athlete he was. And Ron, he's close to breaking some big plays all the time. A little quick slant against an eight man front where you got three defensive backs. He could take it to distance. Four catches for him now for 40 yards. Interesting thing is he loves to block as much as he loves to catch the football. Draw play to Shaw. Gets it out. Oh, breaks a tackle at the 50-yard line. And I'll tell you, you pause and you think they got him, and then they don't. And here is a late flag, and now two late flags coming in. First and a foul against Texas Tech. Talked about Cedric Shaw's lower body strength. 220 pounds, it's up, makes the cut in the hole. There's a tackle, missed by Jody Brown, number 30, just keeps his legs moving, spinning around, picks up good yardage. Well, they had already picked up good yardage on the play, then tacked 15 more on as Shaw comes out of the ball game, and it is a first down Iowa at the Texas Tech 34 yard line. Somebody lost their poise. Around in 1995, he carried the ball 42 times against Michigan State, so he's a durable running back. And 
Sherman says I want a timeout. 8.01 to play until halftime. Iowa 6 to nothing and driving again. Lane. Shaw breaks out of it. He's open. 20, 15, at the 10, at the 5 yard line. Well, the numbers on Shaw, 62 yards rushing on nine attempts as long as 24, the one you just saw. And uh, he is one reception for one yard tonight. The amazing thing about him, though, is three straight 1,000-yard-plus seasons in the Big Ten Conference. That is extremely impressive. After this play, we're going to show you the penalty and what happened after the play that cost the Red Raiders 15 more yards. Pitch to Shaw. Pressure immediately on him, and he's going to be knocked out. I beg your pardon, it is Tavian Banks, who they knocked down behind the line, and Monte Rieger is the guy who got it. Ron, you talked about the penalty, and what you tell your players when you play is don't ever retaliate because they always catch the second guy. Here's Ross Verba. He pushes Ryan Donahue. Then Ryan Donahue takes a swing. The referees always see the second one, never see the first one, and that's the penalty. And Verba. The turn it was pretended as oh I wasn't even involved it was walking oh, yeah. away and he got 15 yards for his team. There's Donahue on the sideline and Spike said to him as he came by you can't lose your head. Second and long Sherman to throw look in right over the middle as it complete but not much there for Damon Gibson to the 40 and it's going to be a third down and 16 as Corey Turner made the defensive play. The Texas Tech defense continues to come up big and get some big plays and that's the nature of the eight man front because it's feast or famine sometimes but you get that big play on the toss sweep you see the outside contain coming and making the play. Here's the pass Corey Turner with a good tackle. Tell you what, Mike, the defense may have to step up and make the big play to get the offense on track in this ball game. Yeah, because it's just a matter of time if you stay in this ball game and with Byron Hansbard and break a big play for you. Here they come with the blitz. Sherman sets in the pocket, looking, now runs out of the pocket, and throws it complete to his tight end, Knipper, inside the 25, and I believe, yes, he got the first down at the 23. Jody Brown knocked him out of bounds, but boy, did they blow a coverage on him. Man coverage, a blitz was on, but good pass protection by Iowa's offense. You'll see the blitz by the outside linebacker, but look at the protection. Matt Sherman has forever to throw. Now he steps in, to, steps to the right side, finds Chris Knipper, number 81, is tight end, and he had Tim Dwight downfield open. So it is a first down. The new line of scrimmage is the Texas Tech 23. Iowa 6 to nothing and looking for more. Here comes Shaw. Left side hurdles, and he goes down to the 20. It'll be a gain of three. Jason Jones down in the bottom of that play. Not much there. Jason Jones, number 90, with good penetration. Making the tackle on Cedric Shaw. But Ron, right here, I, I think there's a mismatch out here for Iowa right now. Tim Dwight has been open constantly on Tony Dart, number 11. It's just a mismatch because of Tim Dwight's uh, athletic ability. And I, I just think Iowa's going to be able to take advantage eventually of that. But we'll see if they do. Under six minutes now until halftime. Lemister at tight end. They always stand him up looking for the end zone. And away and almost intercepted and in fact Odoms had to knock it away from Turner in the end zone. Good coverage on Nemo Odoms number 10 by Corey Turner. Matt Sherman looking to the right side for Tim Dwight. He's covered now trying to come back to the back side. Corey Turner gets turned, gets his head turned around, gets the ball deflected away from Nemo Odoms. Odoms had to play defensive back on that and consider this folks Odoms who was a senior from Austin LBJ, was a halfback at a wishbone backfield with Cedric Shaw in high school. We're well, thinking about covering that kind of speed. Yeah, and give the Iowa coaches credit. They took a wishbone running back and moved him to wide receiver. They saw something in it. Third down. They need the 13 of the Red Raiders. Here comes a blitz right up the middle. Shaw spins by the blitzing linebacker, and he's loose. And Shaw will score. Go for two points right here with the 
Miami at the extra point. Misfire, but that's was all Cedric Shaw here. Good defense by Texas Tech. Exactly what you want. People with tackling ability, but uh, they didn't make the tackle on Cedric Shaw. And the spin moves and the good balance and into the end zone for the talented uh, Cedric Shaw. And uh, two flags thrown for the excessive celebration. We have She'll a actually... After the play, we have unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Timeout, Iowa. So Iowa takes the timeout and we'll take a break. 5.30. Left until halftime. We'll be right back. That could be will go for two. And Tavian Banks, number 22, will come out of tailback. And it looks as though that Shaw will, uh, will stay on the bench for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Penalty for the excessive celebration, of course, will come on the kickoff. Roll it to the right. Pressure. Got his tight end, and that's Knipper for the two points. And it's 14 to nothing, Iowa. Now what Texas Tech has to do, Ron, is take advantage of this penalty on the kickoff with decent field position. But Chris Knipper in motion, coming to the right side. Dean Johnson inside out, couldn't cover him. A good throw by Matt Sherman. Touchdown run, good penetration by Texas Tech, but no one's locking up. Tough to tackle him. Dean Johnson with a missed tackle there, and Cedric Shaw in the end zone. And that's when the flags were thrown, so actually Texas Tech should get decent field position. Well, on New Year's Eve, on the deuce, I don't think you're going to want to miss this one. As far as college basketball is concerned, this will be fun. Here we now, no longer a secret. Number three, Kentucky against number 16, Louisville. That's Tuesday, 4.30 Eastern time. The Wildcats against the Louisville Cardinals. Ron, here's where Texas Tech, uh, you mentioned it, get, should get good field position. They've got to make something happen in this 5.30 left to go in the half. They haven't played that poorly. They just haven't tackled. They made mistakes on offense. Penalties have hurt them. But they're still in this ball game. The total yardage in the ball game, 76 for Texas Tech, 109 for Iowa. Uh, Iowa Sherman, 7 of 11 throwing. 4 of 8 for Lethridge, one intercept. That's the one that led to the touchdown. Iowa's had a 27 plays. Texas Tech has had a 24. Uh, but... The big difference is just the big play and taking advantage of a situation uh, twice now for the Iowa Hawkeyes, once on the interception, and the other was the 15-yard penalty. And the difference so far, Cedric Shaw's had two big runs. Early with the kick on the ground, picked up at the 27-yard line, and that's Cartwright. And he'll take it out to the 41. Now the situation, as I mentioned, 523, lots and lots of time. And Texas Tech has good field position. Let's see if they take advantage of this right here. Bobby Cartwright. Got to find a way to get this young man, Byron Hansbard, uh, loose in this Iowa secondary. Iowa's done a nice job on him in the first half. But penalties have hurt Texas Tech. 12 touches, 85 yards, hands barred 9 for 29. This is the best starting position for Texas Tech tonight. And this option play going to go for a yard loss. That thing was doomed from the get-go. The guard almost ran over Zebby Lethridge. Yeah, there's a collision with the quarterback the from the start, Zebby Lethridge. There wasn't anything there. This blew up right from the start. Zebby Lethridge going to take the handoff. The guard bumps into him. The fullback bumps into him. And he really didn't get to take the ball out to make the option effective. Byron Hansbar had the pitch, and Iowa was there. I'll tell you what, Mike. DeVries has certainly got a lot of penetration on a lot of plays tonight. Anytime that's happening, you, your running game is going to go south. They fake it to Hansbar. Lethridge to throw deep over the middle. And complete behind Donnie Hart. Very dangerous as that ball could have been intercepted. You talk about Jared DeFries, though. He has, leads Iowa in tackles for losses, and he really has done a good job here in the first half against Hans Bard and the offensive line of Texas Tech. But he's had 19 tackles for losses for 120 yards. So a, a, a defensive lineman that's always working up the field. You know, the reason he's got such good speed, I mean, he weighs 260, but he was a fullback in high school, oh, that, and they took him and beefed him up. That's the reason for the great movement. Right over the middle, he got it. This has got to be pass interference. There you go. 
Donnie Hart, the intended receiver, and Knight just ran up his back. Intended for Hart, flag on the play. Ron Tom Knight, we talk about great players. He and Sean Springs out of Ohio State are considered uh, two of the best corners in the country by the pro scouts. Tom Knight just blankets Donnie Hart here, just all top of him right there for the interference. You know, the, a few cheers from the Texas Tech crowd and a few boos from the uh, Iowa partisans. As you look at Tom Knight, a senior out of Marlton, New Jersey, 5'11", 190. Left side and a gain of only a couple as Rollins, one of the first men to get there along with Kerry That's Cook. Kerry and I'll tell you, so far the game plan for Iowa has worked wonderfully, and that is they want to keep him inside, and that's exactly what they've done. And you, and you just got to stay with your game plan if you're Texas Tech because you can still put the ball in his hands because you never know, as we've been saying, when he's going to break a long run. He's an outstanding back. He was recruited by Notre Dame in Colorado. Very highly recruited out of high school. And will announce tomorrow whether he will turn pro or what. And here he is. 5, 10, 15. Counted off at 17 yards. Damian Robinson made the stop. And that, that's all it takes. He is a different kind of runner for Shaw. Shaw doesn't know if he's going to run over you or around you. Hands barred gets around you. And Ron, you talked about him making a decision on uh, whether he's going to come back to college football, but when he was deciding on college, he was in the shower and he heard the Lord talk to him and said, go to Texas Tech. And Spike Dykes had a good comment the other day. He said, we're not allowing him to take showers now because we want him to come back. We don't <laughs> we don't want any decisions made to, to leave here. But an outstanding young man. He is a licensed minister. Down to Trey. Here he comes again. Waits for his guard. Puts his shoulder down and in the vicinity of the 26 is Raj Clark, a freshman out of Baytown, Texas, makes the stop. You know, this is the kind of trip that is big for Iowa. They've got 17 Texans on this football team, and I know Michigan was excited. They had a bunch of Texas kids last year. This is not only a bowl game, but a recruiting trip for this man here. Well, there's no doubt. When you bring your team to an area of the country and you're there for a week, 10 days, and uh, all of a sudden the people who are the good players in this area or in Texas will all of a sudden see your uniforms. They'll see a little bit about your program. It's great to prove to them. Option Lethridge and Iowa plays it nicely. He'll only have a couple. It's Ortley who trips him up. And he's down at the 25-yard line, and there is a flag at the line of scrimmage. side against the Hawkeyes so this one in favor of the Red Raiders don't forget coming up uh, tomorrow night number 13 Washington against number eight Colorado two nine and two football Danielson out on the left coast to bring that one to you tomorrow night Washington and Colorado right now 14 to nothing the Iowa Hawkeyes of the Big Ten leading Texas Tech of the Big 12 option. Boy's got his tight end open and was rushed in the middle and could not get it away and LaFleur messed up everything but I'll tell you over the middle Jason the tight end had broken free. No one was around at the time. No, you're right. 95 PJ Jason was running downfield and if he hit him quickly with him yep. with the football he had a big gainer but uh, again you talked about John LaFleur number 55. They're getting a push up inside they and really they're are. getting in the face of Zebby Lethridge who's six foot tall and causing him to adjust. But again, that's that thing I mentioned to Breeze. John LaFleur is the tackle on the other side. So that 50 front giving the Red Raiders some concern in this first half. Third down. They need the 20. Straight ahead, they give it to the fullback. And Ryan Jones maybe has a yard, and that's it. John LaFleur is down at the bottom of that scrum. Ron, you want points, but I'm not sure I'd kick this field goal right here. Spike Dykes is going to think about it a little bit. I, I'm not so sure I wouldn't go for this one on fourth down with Ron, with Byron Hansbart. Well, we'll think it over with him. 134 left until halftime. We'll be right back to San Antonio. Texas Tech and Mike, what do you think? Number toss, four, would you? Toss sweep to Hansbart. There, there it is. is. Turns it upfield and close to the first down and I'll tell you from where the line judges come up he's not going to have it. 
It is DeFreeze who got out there to make the tackle, and Iowa is jumping up and down. They say, nope, we have stopped him. Well, I still think with the problems that you have in the kicking game, that still was the right call to go for that first down. Good play by Iowa. Give them the credit. They stopped Byron Hansbart short of the first down. DeFreeze, who made the tackle, is limping off the field. But uh, he got his work taken care of. He so, up, I, I'm sorry. He, I was going to say, he grew up in Iowa. He was recruited by Wisconsin and Nebraska, but he said he always wanted to be a Hawkeye. So Matt Sherman and the offense come back on, and I would imagine a couple of times in Cedric Shaw's stomach and then head to the locker room. If he breaks something, wonderful. In fact, they don't even have him on the field right now. Odom in motion. They go straight ahead. Burger. And he will have it for five, maybe six yards. When those fullbacks block all day for Cedric Shaw, 6'3", 229, this is the time you give him a little work. Give him the football every now and keep him happy. You got Cedric Shaw getting a little rest on the sideline. And run the clock down. Five, now 54 seconds left until halftime, but there's a second down. Tavian Banks got him around. Here comes the flag down, and I'll tell you, Texas Tech needs to be maybe looking at a timeout situation here, Mike, because this could be holding. It is against Iowa. Yeah, you want to make sure they have you force them to punt, at least try to block the punt. On the offense, decline, third down. And let's check in with Chris Fowler down in New Orleans. Chris. Well, Ron, coming up on our new Dodge halftime report from near the Superdome here, we'll talk about the trend. Danny Werfel's trying to buck Heisman headaches in bowls. Get a report from Pasadena on the Rose Bowl. And also that ball game you were talking about tomorrow night's holiday bowl between the Buffaloes and the Huskies as Lee and Kurt join me in a little more than a minute. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Chris. Our situation, third down, and they need the 31-yard line. Sherman back to throw. Going to go long, and Dwight took it away from three defensive people. Ran underneath a rainbow. That is hard to believe. Ron, he, he is so exciting as a football player. Oh, he runs so fast that uh, he's just so tough to defend. And now he puts Iowa in a chance to maybe get a field goal here with Dane Johnson on coverage. But Matt Sherman just threw it up. Tim Dwight adjusts to the football, made that catch. There's a tackle by Dane Johnson with 15 seconds to go. They're in business to put some more points on the board. Dane Johnson got turned around, and that is a 50-yard play in a situation where Texas Tech should have been playing to force a punt and have one more offensive look. Instead, it's Iowa with 15 seconds left and an opportunity to get more points. Well, Kellen Winslow talked about the big play out of the small receiver, and he's made some big plays here in the first half. Tavian Banks is going to be hit from behind, stopped after a gain of a couple by Jody Brown. And now Iowa will call the timeout to stop the clock at nine seconds. So we'll take the break with them. 14 to nothing. Iowa leads. We'll come back for the field goal that has come on the field. And this attempt is going to be 41 yards for the right hash mark. Driscoll, the holder. Ryan, a senior out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. the snap for a moment and got it down and the kick is off to the left and no good and the mishandled snap I think by Driscoll is what threw the timing off there is a flag down at the line of scrimmage it is offsides against Texas Tech wow the penalties have been the story here in the first half and poor tackling just give Zach Bromer another shot to tack on three Tell your special teams whenever you go out there for a punt or a field goal to look in at the football, to line up and not be offsides. So this attempt will come from 36 yards away. And he's 
splits this one. Just like in golf, when you take a mulligan, that guy behind you. We're at halftime. Saying all along, he's in a mismatch, so he's going to have some opportunities for some big plays. And Texas Tech's just got to have better mix on offense, Ron. Cedric, well, Cedric, Cedric Shaw. Shaw. I mean, he's been the difference. We uh, we talked about his billing before. Uh, the game started tonight three straight years over 1,000 yards, and here you see why. This is in the first quarter. Ron, this was the play where he set up the first touchdown. They had him in the backfield, but he was able to spin out. Good lower body strength. It's down to about the three-yard line. And this is the run on third down where he avoids a tackle and then spins around, spins, and then gets in the end zone for the touchdown. So two highlight reel films uh, for him. Well, when you look at what happened in the first half, and there's what I'm speaking of as far as Texas Tech is concerned. 22 rushes of the football. They have only 55 yards, so an average per carry of 2.5. And, Ron, I, th I think it's important when you have a 30-minute halftime, you can make a lot of adjustments. And I think this first five minutes for Texas Tech will tell a lot about their ball club. But I think they have to stay with their plan, keep the ball in Byron Hansbard's hands, get mixed with Zebby Lethridge on play-action pass, but do not go away from number four. Byron Hanspark. First half, you see he's averaging 105 yards, rushing yards. Iowa, to their credit, great defensive effort, holding him to 48 yards. And the key, Ron, has been they have not allowed him outside. They're going right. to say to him, you want to run the football? You run it up inside. But you can see outside here, they've had great contain on both sides and keeping everything inside. So Byron Hanspark has not been able to break anything outside. So Spike Dykes, and you could tell how how frustrated he was uh, at the end of the first half when they gave up the long pass. Then Iowa misses the field goal attempt, and they were offside. So uh, it was just one of those things where they kept pointing that gun at their foot, and they kept hitting. And they're going to get the ball first, and I'm sure Spike has challenged him and said, hey, if we're going to get back in this game, let's get back on this first drive. Early to kick it off. Robertson. Dane Johnson back in a dual safety, standing at the goal line. This one is returnable. Robertson. Tripped up at the 15 as he tried to get outside on the right, and let's check in with Kellen Winslow. Kellen? Well, Ron, I got a chance to talk to Coach Spice coming out of the locker room, and what he said was that his team was going to have to pick up their heads, put them back on, screw them on tightly and get ready to play 30 minutes of football they can still win this ball game well that's you know it's a good way to put it they were high early they made the stop they had good field position they throw an interception on the second play offensively give up the touchdown then i felt like they went into a valley a little bit mike yeah they, they were hitting on all cylinders early there but i still think I and mean, this ball club is not out but this is the important drive to me hands barred left side Got a blocker in front, and he will take it close to the 20-yard line. It's going to be DeVries and Matthews combining on the stop. Ron, they're going to have to go 86 yards because to start this thing, they had poor judgment on the kickoff return, and uh, instead of running up inside, they tried to get outside. Now they're back at the 14-yard line. But, again, patience because they had some good things happen in the first half. Zebby Lethridge. Play action this time. Pass got it complete. Tight end Jason. And he will have the first down out of bounds at the 29 as Matt Hughes makes the tackle. And look at Leverage. He is pumped. Yeah, this is where, again, coaches make adjustments at halftime. You have 30 minutes, so it's an extended halftime. You had a lot of time to sit down there as a staff and say, okay, these things will be good. So they get a misdirection pass to PJ Jason right here, and, and all of a sudden you get going again. Through the 11 yards, you can see what they normally average as Hanspard is tackled by Ennis Inge. And that is going to be a gain of about three yards in the play. I was interested in talking with Rick Dykes, and he said they not only script off the beginning of the ball game, sometimes they will also script to begin the second half so they can give as many different formations. And, and what that does, Ron, is the players know ahead of time what you're going to do. Bill Walsh started that uh, many, many years ago with the 49ers, but it, it gives your players a chance to say, okay, when you stand at halftime and you talk to them, you say, okay, we expect these different fronts. Here's the plays we're going to run. 
done. Here's your assignment. You know, so they are prepared. Four wide receiver set for Texas Tech. It's McKenzie in motion, and they give it to Hansbar to get him spread out a little bit, and he's tackled after a gain of three. Matt Hughes defensively. He's a defensive back in high school, Matt Hughes. There's Rick Dykes now again. Son of Spike Dykes. He's making the calls down to his dad, and then it goes on to the football field. But to, you me, to me, Ron, there's no more important drive for Texas Tech than this one. You know, in first drives this year, Texas Tech had scored 9 of 11 times. And tonight, they didn't get it done. Play action. Leffert. No place to run, and DeFreeze is there again. I'm telling you, DeFreeze has looked all world tonight. He has been right there, not only with penetration, but in plain contain. And, Ron, he does a great job of keeping square to the line of scrimmage. He doesn't get turned. He keeps his shoulder pad square to the line of scrimmage on Zebby Lethridge. Good contain also uh, by... The Iowa defensive ends, they just have not allowed them outside. Well, here's Hernandez, and let's see if they can keep it away from Dwight. Tim Dwight in a dual safety, and here's the kick, and they kick it away from him. It's going to come down to Odoms, and he falls down at the 25. So let's take a timeout following the 42-yard kick. Iowa's first second-half possession after this. Leagues uh, and the players, when you talk to them, they had a great time here this week. Iowa right now leading and handling this football game at 17 to nothing. And Tech comes out and thought that possibly a little better drive to open the second half, but it was not there for them. Flemister, the tight end, comes out along with Tim Dwight, the wide receiver. They go straight ahead with a running play. That's Shaw. And let's check in with Kellen Winslow. Kellen? Well, Ron, a very Seven difficult shot, part of defensive line for Iowa. DeVries, number 94, came out of the game right after that last play. Serious cramps in his left leg. They're trying to work it out. He should be okay to get back in the ball game. Thanks, Kellen. I, it looked like he had that leg very, really stiff as he was coming off the field, and I wondered if that was not the case. It was very warm here in San Antonio today. In fact, close to 80 degrees. It's comfortable inside the dome, but uh, not accustomed to it being quite that warm up in Iowa this time of year. That's Flinister in motion to tie it in. They pitch it back to Shaw, turns it upfield. There comes the jet, and he gets hammered, but he has the first down at the 39. Jody Brown comes up to make the hit. The freeze, five stops in this ballgame to reinforce what Kellen was talking about in the part he's playing. I'm going to talk to Cedric Shaw, ask him about the uh, matchup with he and Byron Hansbart. He said, I'd be glad to walk off this field with a win. I'm not interested in yardage, but, boy, Ron, he is really playing like a guy possessed, be, being back home and wanting to do well for the family. Oh, with that last rush, he is now at 98 yards for the ball game. Flemister in motion. They try to crack back with him, and he's going to lose yardage on this one. McGuire and Monte Rieger. Shaw hit behind the line of scrimmage by Monte Rieger. Good penetration again by the Texas Tech defense. Monte Rieger, number 34, is going to blitz up inside and not get picked up. Good Man. penetration. Plus the fact that's time Texas Tech wrapped up. A couple of times they've had him in this ball game. One in the long 24-yard run to take it to the two-yard line. They simply didn't wrap up on it. No, and again, and I talked about this in the batting game. You, you have a layoff. And you, ta you don't tackle as much. You don't practice tackling. And you're going to be sloppy. You're going to be sloppy in a bowl game. Two tight ends. They give it to the fullback, and straight ahead is Berger. And he is close. In fact, he will have the first down. Now, one line judge said he had it at the 50. The other said he's just a little bit short. Let's see. This may call for a measurement. Ron, what I'm talking about is when you start the season in two-a-days, you really practice the fundamentals of tackling. And then as the season goes on, you practice it a little bit. But then at the end of the season, you don't want a lot of contact because your guys are wore down. And then you have a layoff for a bowl game, and you don't come back and practice tackling, uh, live tackling. You talk, you, you set up, and you and you uh, fit up, but you don't practice live tackling. And that's why there's a lot of missed tackles in bowl games. Now, as you can see, about six inches short. That's uh, all they missed it by. Well, what's the comparison as far as Shaw 
and Hansbard. Hansbard now 17 tries, 60 yards. And for Cedric Shaw, 96. He lost a couple on that one play. 15 touches, and he has the touchdown. And the biggest difference is two big runs by Cedric Shaw. Byron Hansbard has not been able to get loose. Knippert, the tight end, checks back into the lineup, and Flemister will come to the sideline. Mike, why do they stand up their tight ends uh, like they do? Well, they're different than anybody around the country. They stand him up, they get a good look at coverage, they get a good look at defense, and then uh, on their toss play, they're able to reach right now to the defensive outside linebacker, defensive end, whoever he's going to block on. So just a different uh, focus and a different twist by Hayden Fry. Under your watch, here comes 81. Knipper to the line of scrimmage, and he will not go on a three point. He will stand. And he blocks inside as they take it straight ahead. They'll pick up the first down. Matt Sherman on the as They just move out the middle of the line. Reardon, Reichel, and Derek Rose blocking up front. Matt Reichel, an interesting story, a sophomore out of Greendale, Wisconsin. Scored a 34 on his ACT. He has literally a 4.1 average in a four-point school. And it's because of extra credit and extra courses that he takes. But an outstanding student, Matt Reichel. Number 76, there he is. I, I believe that he knows who to block in his football game, too. <laughs> a pretty smart young man. 17 to nothing. Iowa leads it. They go with the counter tray. Shaw gets by one, will not get by number 90, and that's Jason Jones. You know, Jason's not a starter, but we have called his name several times tonight. Big young freshman at 6'1", 3'14", out of Dallas. And Iowa's done a nice job on the leading defensive lineman, Tony Daniels. Yeah, we have called his name much tonight. Number 86, he really is probably the best defensive lineman for Texas Tech. He's had 11 tackles for losses, four caused fumbles, and four fumble recoveries. But tonight, he's been blocked fairly well by the Iowa offensive front. Yep, we talked to him yesterday. He set out the spring when he got to he had a knee injury that kept him out all of 1995 but has played extremely well this year. They need his big play here in the second half. Pressure's on. Sherman gets his pass complete. There's Tim Dwight. And he is now over 100 yards for the ball game as Tony Darden makes the tackle. Ron, every young receiver that uh, high school or grade school that's watching tonight, watch Tim Dwight come back and use his hands and come back and snatch the football out of the air. He runs a deep curl route against Tony Darden, comes back and uses his hands and makes that catch and then makes extra yards after the guy. I really Boy, am impressed with him. Dane Johnson did not break on that ball real quickly, did he? No. Looked as though he got fooled. Fast as advertised, Tim Dwight. First down, Iowa. They have it at the Texas Tech 35-yard line. And here's Mike Berger. You know, Ron, when you've got a guy like Tim Dwight out there, and you watched Iowa play a couple times this year, you talked about on television, but he is always a threat on the reverse, too. That's why you get so accustomed to following Cedric Shaw with the football. And the next thing you know, they're going to bring Tim Dwight back on a reverse. And uh, so that's the scary part if you're the defensive coordinator, John Goodner. Tim Dwight's dad is a, is a teacher, school teacher, American Studies, he said. Berger in motion away from the line of scrimmage. They go back to Shaw. Hit from behind. There's Tony Daniels right there who makes the tackle. Dwayne Price also up on the secondary, the nickelback. Dwayne Price and Tony We're talking Daniels about Tim Dwight again. He, he told us that he really was close to going to South Carolina with Sparky Woods last year, and they got fired. And he said, he, he may, you asked him, he said, would you have gone to South Carolina? And he said, I may have gone there. He visited Stanford, and uh, he really felt at home. And I, I doubted he would have gone anywhere but Iowa, being born and raised there at Iowa City. But he really took a good look at South Carolina. Well, when that, when that staff got fired at South Carolina, that's the reason he looked away from it. Formation Shaw. Flag comes down. Nice juke move to the outside. He'll take it for the first down. And now let's see what that marker is about. This may be holding, Mike, from where it was thrown and when it was thrown. Nope, procedure. I don't believe there's been a holding call tonight. 
Texas Tech has asked for a couple. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said there hasn't been any tonight. Well, here's Shaw one more time. You see he fakes the move inside. It looked like Ross Burba had his hands around there. Could have been one, but uh, not called. It's a good job by Robert Johnson staying at home to make the stop. Now with a penalty. Third down, line to make just inside the 25. We are already down to six minutes left in this third quarter. And uh, Iowa not only holding on, but running down the clock. And I'd make sure I knew where number six was if I was a defense for uh, Texas Tech. Well, there he goes. He got him in motion, but they go with the run, and they're not going to pick it up. The Shaw will be tackled by Jody Brown at the 30. And this is going to be a distance job if they go for the field goal. This will be at least 42, if not 43 yards. Jody Brown's had a good first half uh, for Texas Tech. Missed one tackle, but really has been active up front. Now, he's a safety, and when an eight-man front, they cheat him up in the running game, and he's made some big plays for this defense. Hurley will come on. He's their distance uh, field goal kicker. Robert is the guy that they use from shorter range. This is a 47-yard attempt. 47-yard field goal. You can see from long distances, he is very accurate. Well, he did all the distance in the world, and this one is no good. Wide right. And he thought it was good, Mike. Both he and the holder, Triscoll, stood up and gave a signal that they thought it was good. The official underneath the upright on the right said, nope, no good. Timeout on the field, 5-10, left in the third. Back to San Antonio. After down to the sideline, and Kellen Winslow. Kellen. All right, Ron, I'm here with a special guest, actually two special guests, Frank Felicella. Very good, Kelly. President and CEO of Builder Square, sponsor Alamo Bowl, and his beautiful wife, Maggie. Frank, tell us, why does a Builder Square get involved with a game like this? Well, there's three reasons. Number one, one of our credos as a corporation is to be involved in children, things that keep them safe, things that keep them healthy, and things that help educate them. Uh, we, in this bowl game, the city of San Antonio and Builder Square, donate a lot of money to education, as you know. This also is a tremendous boost for our city. You've been down on a wonderful river walk. Mm -hmm. You've been through our gorgeous city, and you've met our citizens. This is a great place to visit, and tourism is one of our most important businesses. Well, we thank you. We've had a great time down as ESP and crew, and we thank Builder Square for sponsoring this ball game. Thank you, Kellen. All right, Ron, back up to you. Okay, Kellen, thanks a million. Uh, yeah, you are exactly right. This is uh, one of those cities where, whether it's festival time or whether it's Christmas or the spring holidays, it's, uh, it's an interesting place to visit. A lot of history and a lot of fun. First down, Texas Tech. Here's Hansbard. And that defense of Iowa has just been so persistent, they will not be beaten, Mike. And Ron, you notice that number three, Damian Robinson, just keeps getting up there. Every time Byron Hansbart tries to turn the corner, Darren Robinson, the free safety, is there. You see him right there in the middle? He's going to come over and make this play. Hayden Fry compares Damian Darren Robinson to Burton Hanks of the 49ers. Pretty good comparison. Lethbridge to second down. Sits in the pocket. That one well overthrown. Field Scoville, the intended receiver, as Plaz Atkins had the cover, and now it's going to be third down as he was well off the mark. I think probably the most, the, the best thing that you can say as far as the Iowa defense is concerned, like on that, not the last play, but the play before, nobody's on the ground. They stay up and do a great job with their hands, Mike. Well, they do. They get off blocks fast, which you want defensive guys to do. Get off blocks and make plays. Now, Texas Tech is running out of chances here, even though it's 459, because Iowa's offense will continue to possess the ball and run time off this clock. They need Leverage play. back to throw on third down, and he dumps it out to Hansbard. Hansbard puts a head down and finally is going to be tackled at around the 36-yard line. Rollins and Kerry Cooks, and it is punting time for the Red Raiders again. Leverage's pass complete to Hansbard. Just an excellent job by Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator in this Iowa defense. Now there's the guy, Tim Dwight, 
Debo Odoms, number 10, is back with him. Last time, Hernandez kicked it away from him. But the, the idea of putting two back there is that you can't kick it. You may be able to kick it away from Dwight, but it's going to be handled with two guys back. Here's the punt, and again, he kicks it away from him. Odoms lets it get away from him, and now takes a big Texas Tech bounce. This thing is going to go dead inside the 20-yard line. So there's a timeout on the field, 4.02 left to play in the third. It's a 46-yard boot. No, and the, the defense is going to have to do it. They've got to cause a turnover here because they've got to change this game. Game's are totally in Iowa's favor. It's Knipper in motion. Shaw right up the middle, and he's going to take it for four, maybe five yards. Donahue puts the hit on him. College football action continues with ABC Sports. Presentation of the Rose Bowl. Number two, Arizona State against number four, Ohio State. New Year's Day, 4.30 Eastern Time. And then on Thursday, number one, Florida State against number three, Florida, and the Nokia Sugar Bowl down in New Orleans. That last carry, Shaw now over 100 yards, seventh 100-yard rushing game this season, the 20th of his career. And, Ron, give that offensive line a lot of credit. They've done a nice job blocking for him tonight. All right, David Rodgers. They fake it to him, want to throw. One man round, and he misses this one badly. Dwayne Price was out there on the cover. Yeah, that didn't fool Dwayne Price at all. He was sitting back in center field. He knew they were going to take a shot on Tim Dwight down the field but that just was a bust because Tim Dwight was running across the field and the ball was thrown down the middle of the field. Good coverage here on number six Tim Dwight is going to run a post. Did you see the free safety Dwayne Price sitting back in center field there's no place for that ball to be thrown. I called it a one man route actually you could see a couple of people Gibson one of those underneath is kind of a safety bow but he didn't he didn't look to either one of those he wanted Dwight all the way. Too tight in the line, but this time Sherman under pressure gets it away and incomplete. And now here's a flag down back at the 17 yard line. And I think there is that holding call that. Yeah, you know, I'm not so sure I wouldn't take this penalty because even though you turn it down now, you're going to be in a in a fourth down situation and force them to punt. But I was struggling a little bit in long yard situation. I think I'd take it back because this punter, Nick Gallery, is going to bombing out of there anyway. Well, Spike Dykes has just said on the offer, decline it. Decline. Fourth down. Let's we'll see what kind of punt Nick Gallery gets off here. Spike once said football back with 310 to go in the third quarter. This gallery looks like Matt DeBuck is the only man back for Texas Tech. He has dropped off to around the 32 yard line. Coming after him, and here's his kick. Good heavens, what another missile. DeBuck all the way back to the 18 yard line, and he's going to be hit by guess who? Tim Dwight. 56 yards on the kick and a minus one on the return. That's why I say, when you've got a punter that punts it that far, you've got to take every advantage you can get to back him up. Tim Dwight looking on coverage now. He loves to cover kicks. Great offensive player. He comes down. Full speed, comes under control, and then makes a good, solid tackle. Well, we told you he's a great track man. Not only loves to catch the football, but he loves to block, and he also obviously loves to cover kicks with that kind of speed. He's just outstanding, Ron. Tech the throw on first down. Leverage gets it away. Too tall. Intended for Hart and Robinson almost made the pickoff. And let's check in with Kevin Winslow. Second down and 10. There's a pass right over the middle. Has it complete? And there's McKenzie. And Texas Tech really with the first substantial throw and catch here in the second hand. Kellen, let's try you one more time. All right, Ron, as I was saying, Bill, in, Bill Ennis Ange, the defensive lineman for Iowa, was walking a bit down the sideline during the break, telling his teammates that the Texas Tech players were afraid of them, that they were controlling, that they could, shit, could keep playing with a lot of pressure because Texas Tech is about to fold on them. 
Well, that pass to DeBuck is complete, and right now Texas Tech abandoning the run and throwing the football and picking up some yardage with it. Well, you always try to find a spot in the ball game. Uh, Bill Innes in trying to figure a way to break the spirit of this Texas Tech football team, and Zebby Lethridge trying to keep it alive with throwing the football. And they're also running a little hurry up. Here's Hansbar. Cuts it back into the middle. Gets loose for a second. Ball is loose. And Texas Tech has recovered, and I believe where he recovered it is going to be enough for the first down. Plus the fact there is a marker at the line of scrimmage as Pugh made the recovery. It was a solid hit in the secondary on Byron Hansbar. And the Iowa player is down following the, uh, the hit. That's Thigpen, sophomore out of Dalton, Illinois. Hansbar. With number three, Damian Robinson from one side. There's the shoulder and a good hit by Eric Thigpen. Caused a fumble. Texas Tech recovered, but have since been penalized on that play. Illegal use of hands against Texas Tech. And instead of having the first down, it's going to be second down in the new line of scrimmage. Is going to be back at the, where do they have it? The 34-yard line. Neb looks as though he's okay, but they're just trying to Help him get a few more cobwebs out. Now, well, thrifty Carmel Bowl week continues tomorrow with the Plymouth Hot Hughes with seven to freeze with six. Let's see what the Red Raiders come up with in second down. They want to throw. Pressure off the corner. Pass right over the middle is caught, and that's hard. At the 50-yard line, Hart makes the sliding catch, and it's good for the first down. Well, it looks like Zevi Lethridge, Lethridge is throwing a little bit more confidently here in the uh, third quarter round as, as we wrap it down and throwing the ball over the middle a little bit better. They're also going no huddle here and trying to split it up a little bit against the Iowa. And Iowa's dropped the safety off, Mike, 20 yards off the football. They pump it once, wants to go long to Hart. He got held up. And now Lethridge just going to run for his life and go out of bounds. And that's Hughes who forced him out. It looked like he actually did get help. Uh, 82, Donnie Hart was trying to get free, but couldn't get free from the corner. And that's who Zebby Lethridge wanted to go to the football, go with the football, and couldn't get the ball to him. And Iowa's got another player down. It looks as though it's Tom Knight uh, has injured an ankle and is down at the 24-yard line. Well, that's two defensive backs that have been hurt, and where that affects you is if you want to go into a nickel or a dime or with the extra defensive backs on the field, especially with Texas Tech going no huddle now, uh, you need some extra backs, defensive backs on the field. So let's take a timeout. 131 left in this third quarter. Back right after this. His replacement. Also Atkins on the other side. Pressure up the middle. They set the screen and got it complete. And Hansbart dropped the football. Nice job by Bill Ennis Inns, number nine. They ask him to do a lot of things. They ask him to rust the passer, and they ask him sometimes to drop off. He gets his hand up, Ron. He's being blocked. Now watch number nine. Bill Ennis Inns, he gets his hand up there, makes the extra effort to deflect that ball away from Byron Hansbart. He's had a great ball game. He tipped it just enough to knock Hansbart off stride. Third down, they take blitz. They don't go with it. They throw it complete to McKenzie, and McKenzie will have the first down at the 40. Rollins got it. Now, Texas Tech, by going no huddle, the injuries to Big Ben and Knight really sets Iowa in some standard defenses. Now, they have them in a special defense now. Zebby Lethridge is taking advantage of that. First down. Going for McKenzie, got him open, just overthrew him. Wow, he had a step at the 18. Damon Robinson trying to cover, but he was behind him. Ron, I still think you got to keep Byron Hansbard. And you go to a throwing game, you're down 17, 103 to go, but you still have to run Byron Hansbard on some type of draw or run him at this Iowa defense to keep him honest. Tech has been very successful on the quick slant patterns also, Mike. Scoble and also uh, Donnie Hart. Here's Hansbart. They're running up into the middle. He'll have two yards. DeVries puts a stop on him, and now Tech with a third down, and it's going to be about eight for the first. Byron Hansbart, Oklahoma, committed nine people to stopping Byron Hansbart, and they held him under 100 yards. 
tonight, tonight he's got 71. And tonight Iowa has just done a great job in stopping him. Going deep. Right over the middle, and that's got to be interference. Oh, my goodness. His hand was right. Look, field is going crazy. He was all over. <laughs> Billy Coates, number 30. It's the corner that just replaced Tom Knight. You can see he is uh, He's all, over. all over field Scoville. Spike Dyke says, let's go for it. Fourth down and eight. They need the 30-yard line. Quarterback draw, nothing. Going to lose Bill Innesange along with Art Lieb on the stop, and Iowa takes it over five times. They've gotten to the Tech quarterback tonight. Well, Bill Ennis Inge came in with 10 sacks, and uh, he is right in on Zebby Lethridge, and I believe this was supposed to be a quarterback draw all the way. No, it, just, it was a pass play, just broke down from the start. Good for a good uh, rush by Bill Ennis Inge, and also John Ortley. Well, a tough series for Texas Tech because they had some opportunities there. Sherman comes trotting on, 27 seconds left in this third quarter. Iowa leads it, 17 to nothing. Run, I've been impressed with Iowa. Now, Iowa has played a great defensive football game and, and an impressive running back in Cedric Shaw and a receiver in Tim Dwight. It's as good as any we've seen all year. Shaw to the line of scrimmage will have a couple. Tavian Banks, I beg your pardon. Tavian Banks on the carry for the Hawkeyes, brought down by Jody Brown. That could be the final play of the third quarter. Tavian, the junior, out of Bettendorf, Iowa, and as we mentioned back in the first half, coaches talk about he reminds them a lot of Ronnie Harmon, a very talented young man, but when you got a Cedric Shaw in front of you, it's hard to get playing time. That is the end of the third quarter, so let's take a timeout. Iowa, 17, Texas Tech still looking for points. We'll be right back. Pitch comes back to Banks, tries to turn the corner, has a blocker in front, and that's Monte Rager, who is out there to make the hit. And let's check Damian in with Banks Kevin. 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 Oh, Ron and Monte Mike, Rager. just an update on the injuries. As far as Big Pin and Knight are concerned, two defense, two defensive backs for Iowa. The team doctor and the head trainer have gone inside with both players, so no one could give us a definite report on what their the extent of their injuries. But I will tell you that when Knight left the field, he was very shaken up, even to the point where he was shaking. So we'll wait to see when they come back out what they give us. Okay, thanks, Kellen. Third down, and uh, Iowa needs to take it to the Tech 45 to keep this drive going. Pressure coming off the corner this time. Look in pass, incomplete. That was intended for Odoms. And it will be fourth down. Now what's going to be interesting, we have seen him boom the ball tonight. I want to watch Gallery and see how he can pooch kick it because this for him is a pooch kick, Mike. <laughs> I'll tell you, Ron, I, I've been impressed with I, the Brad Maynard from Ball State was the best runner I've seen all year, but I, I tell you, this guy, Nick Gallery, is right there with Maynard. Now well, here's his kick, and he booms another one. Fair catch is signal for it, the five, and it goes into the end zone. Well, New Year's Eve on ESPN College Hoops First action back. tips off at 9.30. Well, number two, Wake Forest, led by Timmy Duncan, takes on number eight, Utah, led by big man Keith Van Horn. This is a rematch last year. Utah went up to Wake, and they lost in a close one. Now Wake has to go west and play up in Salt Lake. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried. And Kevin Winslow coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. 17-0. The Iowa Hawkeyes scored six in the first quarter and 11 in the second quarter. Leverage on first down. Got a lot of time, gets it away, it's complete. And that's McKenzie and close to a first down. And now there's a flag and we could have a late hit against Iowa. That's what it's going to be. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Well, that's what Texas Tech needs because they have not been able to get the big play on this Iowa defense. Good play fake by Sebby Lethridge. Good throw, and then there's the hit. 
by John LaFleur, number 55. And credit this Iowa defense. They have not allowed any big plays by this Texas Tech offense. Everything they have earned tonight has been difficult on offense. McKenzie in motion, top of the screen, play action, and a pass to McKenzie, completed the 50, and he stepped right out of bounds. Billy Coates was there defensively. Ron, when you look at great running backs, Byron Hansbard not only runs the ball very well, but he's asked to block. This is a play action. Now watch, he's going to block number 37, Matt Hughes. Gets a fake, gets right up in the knees of Matt Hughes, and blocks him and protects his quarterback, Zebby Lethridge. Now, Mike, they're saying that he caught the ball out of bounds. They're taking it back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Lethridge sings the pass, has it complete at the 48. That's Matt DeBuck who went high in the air. Matt's only 5'8", and he stretched it out much taller than that to come down with the football. It'll be third down, about three. They're working on Billy Coates over there, the backup for Tom Knight, number 30. Well, those corners for Iowa come up to play bump, and then they go off him. Now they'll give him. He's got it. He beat him. Got it complete. I don't believe it. Mitchell dropped the football as they got him playing too aggressively. It'll stop and go. Well, you talked about the bump and run. It's Billy Coates, number 30. Now he bites on the hitch. And now he's gone. Stacy Mitchell, number six, behind him, but forgot to bring in the football. That was the big play that they have not been able to get tonight. That's right. Fourth down, and obviously they got to go for it. Down 17 to nothing. They need three yards. They come with the option. Hands barred with the wrong. And say that. Makes the tackle. Hands barred went to the right. Lethridge came to the left side. Well, remember, he was sick and didn't practice this week, and that uh, may have affected him. Didn't work out on Friday didn't do much on Thursday and as Mike said it possibly has cost him as far as preparation for this ball game. He just went the wrong way in the option. There was nobody for Lethridge to pitch the ball to. Shaw waits for his blocker. Gets by Dean Thompson and is going to wind up with a gain of a couple of yards and let's go down to Kellen. Kellen? Well, Ron and Mike, we have an update on Eric Thigpen, number 21 for Iowa defensive back. He has a concussion. Of course, he is out with a concussion. Tom Knight has a sprained ankle. They're not sure how serious it is. He is getting x-rayed right now. The speculation is that he is finished for the day also. Yeah, I would imagine so. With the, it looked like it was very severe. Uh, Kellen, when he came off the field, he could put no weight on it whatsoever. So uh, you would suspect that their all-everything cornerback will, uh, will not return in this one tonight. 17 to nothing. Iowa leads it. 13-22 left to play in our ball game. White in motion. They go with Shaw. Breaks off one tackle. Bounces it back. Tries to get to the other side. And he's got a blocker in front. And will be knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. And Iowa wants a flag. And here comes a late one. Ron, you talk about runs that they'll be running back a long time for Iowa, and uh, Cedric Shaw has made three of them. Tim Dwight goes in motion, and because it's an eight-man front, they try to get the receiver on the outside guy. Now, what happens is he reverses the field. Taurus Rucker, number 89, gets another shot at him but misses a tackle. And then he outruns Dean Johnson. So you can see the late hit, and they step off 15 more against Texas Tech. So the Red Raiders right now are digging a hole that is going to soon be impossible to get out of. 
Tech penalties tonight, six for a total of 57 yards. Tim Dwight gets a breather. 25, Richard Willock comes in at wide receiver along with Odoms, but they go straight ahead with the running play, and that is Spider inside the 20. He's down to the 15-yard line. Jody Brown defensively will make the stop on him, and it's a gain of 12. Well, Kellen Winslow talked about uh, Bill Ennis in saying, you know, we can break their will, and I think they're right at that point right now to, to knocking them out right here. Rodney... Miller, number 34, breaking up inside there and just running strong, good leg drive, and uh, again, missed tackles by Texas Tech, Ron, and they just have not tackled very well tonight. Miller's a great-looking kid, number 34. We are always look at a bowl game, the motivation. Uh, sometimes teams just don't show up to play. Reward, and uh, they played hard during the year, and Tavian Banks, Mike, takes it down to the 10-yard line. Bobby Cartwright defensively. And his coaches, you just work them and practice them and get ready for this game. And uh, so many mistakes by Texas Tech tonight. Interesting that uh, they are giving Filler a chance to play tonight at, at fullback because he has not seen a lot of action. But he's a senior out of Waco, Texas, which, of course, is where uh, Coach Hayden Fry played his college football. Banks the only setback this time. Two tight ends, two wide receivers. 17 to nothing Iowa as we go under 12 minutes in the ball game, and it's Banks right up the middle for a yard. Tony Daniels has him by the ankles. Ron had talked about the quarterbacks checking off tonight. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Matt Sherman, uh, usually you have a color in your cage. You'll go set blue, 22, and then hot. There's always a color that's uh, a live color, and probably in Iowa it's a black. So if you say set black, and then the next number is the play you're going to check to. Now the other way you go to it is check with me, go with a run and a pass, and go to the line of scrimmage and make that call. And I'm sure tonight Matt Sherman has done a good job for Iowa of checking off plays. Third down, and they need the five-yard line. As Berger goes in motion. Fabian Banks not going to have the first down. He is at the nine. Jody Brown and Jason Jones defensively for Texas Tech. Tony Daniels got in the backfield, forced that play up inside right to Jason Jones, who's had a pretty good ball game. Zach Bromart, the sophomore out of Pensacola, will come on to attempt the field goal. And this one's going to come from where he's standing at about 26, maybe 27 yards. Ryan Driscoll to hole, number seven. Trying to make it a 20 to nothing ball game. And again, a little trouble handling the snap, but he is perfect, knocks it down the middle. Left. So we'll take a timeout. 10.36 left of the ball game, 20 to nothing. Iowa. Very, very tight during the year. Here's Hurley's kick. Clint Robinson, Robertson, thank you, Barton, inside the five, takes it straight up the middle, and close to the 30-yard line. I don't know if that ball came loose or what. One of the Tech players went in late like he was going and trying to recover it. There's Clint Robertson. Tell you, Mike, he's number three on the depth chart. He is a good-looking freshman that they think could turn into a real superstar before he leaves uh, the South Plains. He has good speed. Mm -hmm. you know, Spike Dykes and staff really high on him. They list him at 6 feet 179. He looks a little bigger than that, actually. That's Mitchell in motion to the top of your screen. Zephy Lethridge gets it away, has it complete, and that's Donnie Hart. And Hart will have it across the 45 to the 47, 17 yards in the pass play. You know, Ron, as this game is winding down here, 10 minutes marks, I, I keep thinking about Byron Hansbard. Uh, you know, he said, he's quoted as saying, God has a plan for my life, and I'm just following this plan. And he's going to make that decision next week of whether or not he's going to stay at Texas Tech. And uh, I really believe he should stay at Texas Tech another year. You know, I do, too. Uh, Mike, it's one of those things where... It's 
Boy, there's Mitchell dropping another football. He's worried about running before he catches it. Uh, there are some people who say, though, that he may not go pro football either, that he may go to the ministry. So, Well, well and, you know, he made that statement. He said, yeah. you're going to be surprised by my uh, decision. So, and Spike was talking about it the other day. He said, uh, I'm not sure. I thought it was interesting, though, that Spike said uh, he started to talk to him the other day in the practice field, and he said, son, do me a favor. Just tell me when you tell everybody else. I don't want to know ahead of time. And he said, you know, if he makes the decision to leave, he's already done Paid great things at Texas Tech. That pass well off the mark as Lethridge had to really hurry. The buck is the man that they wanted to get it to. Just have not been able to put anything together on offense tonight. Uh, just, but I, I think when you when that happens, everybody has a tendency to say, "Well, your offense is lousy." But give a lot of credit to those guys in those black jerseys because they have really played well and have contained Byron Hansbart. Yeah, Bobby tonight. Bobby Elliott's uh, defensive club has played extremely well in this one this evening. Lethridge on third down, hit as he gets it away. There was nobody over there. Here's the statement that Spike made about uh, Hensbard and if he does decide to go ahead and turn pro. He makes a lot of third down plays for us, a lot of third down conversions, and he is a guy that... He's 45 and a half yards per boot, his longest 59 tonight. Jeremy Hernandez, sophomore out of Midland, Texas. Boy, they dribbled that one back to him, but he got it away. And Dwight can't do anything with this one, and Texas Tech is going to down it at the one yard line. 52 yards on the kick. And Oscar Solis got down there to touch it dead. So we'll hold it right here with 945 left to play in our ball game. And the Red Raiders, we have said it all night, Mike, it might have to be the defense that gets them off the snide, get a turnover or something to get some points. Yeah, they need something, but I'm sure Hayden Fry and his Iowa football team and Don Patterson, the offensive coordinator, not going to take a lot of chances with a 20-0 lead in the, in the way their defense is playing. They'd like to burn some clock here and uh, get a drive going and put this one away. So Iowa, as you can see, scrimmaging from their own end zone. Ball at the one-yard line. And they'll just take it straight ahead, pick up what they can, and Filler almost broke it. Out of the 10 to the 12, the 13-yard line, a gain of 12 on the play. Well, he's one of those 17 uh, players from Texas trying to impress the home folks. Clock running now under 10 minutes left in our ball game. 20 to nothing, Iowa. Texas Tech was actually favored in this football game. And they were coming in. I, I think everybody, uh, again, everybody wasn't sure who was going to show up to play, but boy, Iowa has uh, proved that point. Granbus, the fullback, takes it straight ahead. He's out to the 25-yard line. Good for the first down. Kellen Winslow, let's check with you. Oh, uh, thank you, Ron and Mike. We're here with Sandra Clark, the mother of Cedric Shaw. Cedric Shaw, Sandra. And of course, these people stand up in front of us. Mrs. Shaw, how did you feel when your son decided to go to Iowa to leave the state of Texas? Well, it was a decision that Cedric made. I was sad that he was going to go far away from home, but it was his own decision. So I decided if that's where he wanted to go, I would just back him. How many games have you seen up here since he's been up at Iowa? About 12. And you had an interesting observation this afternoon about the death of the Mitchell family that you wanted to share with everybody. Well, all the guys are pretty upset and sad about it because they are playing today up under a lot of pressure and they have their teammate on their mind, the grief of his mother and father. And you think that they're out there playing as hard as they have been in the memory of her? Yes, I do. All right, thank you very much, and thanks for being so patient with us. Ron, Mike? Okay, Kellen, thank you. Uh, the numbers tonight, 115 yards and 20 attempts, just under six yards per try and one touchdown. And Iowa has just called a timeout, so we'll take it with them. 
Eight left in this one. And boy, they have lived true to his promise. Maybe in banks. Breaks it outside. 5, 10, 15. Knocked out of bounds finally by Darwin Brown. And he is all the way out to the 44-yard line. 16 yards on the carry by Tavian Banks. Well, we talked about Knocked how they have a double Darwin threat Brown. at tailback. You got Cedric Shaw, who's at over 100 yards. And then you bring in Tavian Banks, who broke his arm in the fifth game of last season. Uh, they, uh, they have two outstanding tailbacks. Well, the other thing that uh, Don Patterson said that they had to have tonight was some balance on offense. They had to be able to throw it some, and also they had to be able to run the football. Well, when you look at the combination, 163 and 126, that's that's pretty doggone strong. And you know, the other thing, Ron, is Texas Tech didn't put any pressure on their offense. Nope. Tavian Banks finally tripped up by Dwayne Price, and he's close to another first down. That's a gain of eight on first down. Well, what I mean by that is the Banks, Iowa Texas defense had control. Texas right. offense all night, so there was never any pressure for Iowa to get moving in a faster mode. Spike Dykes obviously very disappointed in uh, this performance tonight. Being the ball carrier, he will take it for the first down. Inside the 45, he's down to the 43. But they'll be back, Ron, and uh, being Price. in the Big 12 the first year, I first thought they had an excellent year. Oh, they did. Uh, and, and in fact, they had a couple of ball games. Texas Tech gave one away at K-State, and uh, there were a couple more on there that they, the ball games were closer. They get over 600 yards against Texas and lose that ball game at home. Rare that you get over 600 and lose a football game. Yeah, the kicking game uh, really cost him, but uh, he's done an excellent job recruiting when you get players like Byron Hansbard. Uh, uh, recruiting just going to get better. And again, the ball carrier goes straight ahead, puts his shoulder pad down, and at the 37, Price and Brown combining on the stop. Well, I'll tell you what. Between spring practice and getting ready for next year, and I don't know if uh, Hansbart is going to come back or not, they're going to have to have their playing shoes on when they open 97 because they open uh, at Nayland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee before 107,000 people. Well, that's the other thing about Spike Dykes now. He'll take them all on. I mean, he's played them all. Uh, even when they were not in the Big 12, they would play Nebraska and Oklahoma. They, they take on all comers in their schedule. Go to Georgia this year. Again, and he's close to the first down. In fact, from where the linesman has come in at the 32 and a half, it's enough of the first down. Price defensively, and we're about to go under six minutes left in this one as the clock runs down. Well, the thrifty car rental bowl week continues New Year's Eve on ESPN. First at noon, the McDonald's Heritage Bowl, Southern University against Howard. Then at 3 o'clock, number 24, Army against Auburn, and the Poulin Weed Eater Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'll tell you what. Auburn better buckle it up in that ball game because this Army football team is going to come to play and they give you fits with the oh. wishbone and uh, brother some Oliver, things they do on defense. Yeah, Brother Oliver has, uh, I'm sure, been staying up late studying for that one. We had him against Syracuse and that's an unusual offense the way they run their wishbone and they're very efficient with it. Banks the ball carrier close to the 25. Now we go to do the Alabama-Michigan game. What do you think of that ball game? Very, very tight. Two excellent defenses. Uh, Gene will hang them up after uh, after Wednesday. So uh, his team got something special to play for. But I, two schools with such great tradition. Uh, I, I'm anxious uh, to see that one on Wednesday, Mike. We'll kick off bowl day. That's what, 10 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock Eastern. Tenth play of this drive, and it's going to be knocked down for a loss. That's Monte Rieger, who will get back and make the hit on Banks. Banks down behind the line by Interesting bowl games when you look at Florida, Florida State. Uh, and I hate what's happened with that one, Mike. I, I've, that, to me, is is out of character and has gotten out of hand. It's it's become personal, and I don't think that should happen. I think it's going to be a, a good football game. I've said all year, I, I think that Florida State is the best team in the country, and uh, I don't 
think Thad Busby gets the credit he deserves. I, people uh, talk about the, they may have a weakness there. I, I certainly don't see that. I think he's a very, very solid quarterback. And with Warwick Dunn, uh, Driscoll at quarterback, Mike, excuse me, they give this young man some credit here, the senior out of Cedar Rapids in, and he threw the pass complete to Willock, and he picks up the first down. He started the first six games at 94 before he broke his collarbone. So the fans uh, happy to see him in there. Twelfth play of the drive. About to go under four minutes. Driscoll 6'4", 220. As you look at Sherman down on the sidelines, and Sherman finished the night 9 of 16 and threw the two-point conversion uh, to the tight end. Tavian Banks almost broke it for six points and got tripped up. I believe it was Brown who got a hand on it. Tavian Banks shows you that quickness in the hole. It's a good block by Aaron Greenquist. 36. Ron, we talked about it early. The quarterbacks were going to decide this game. Uh, whoever could play the most consistent. And you're looking at Matt Sherman. You gave his statistics on offense. He, he didn't make a lot of mistakes tonight. Got him in and out of some bad plays and, and had a pretty fair night. Got them out of harm's way for the most part. They take it straight ahead there with Grandquist. And he'll have uh, two. But for Lethridge, they uh, they shadowed him and his and his people that he depend on very well tonight. The Iowa defense, Say, what's up, Big Day? well schooled, and that really is a big difference in this football game. And when you look at the secondary, they have three or four starters from the state of Texas, so they, they really blanketed the receivers tonight. Zeppi Lethers didn't have a lot of area to throw the ball into. No, he didn't, right? Fade drop for the end zone. Caught it for the touchdown. That's over. So both of the young men from Austin LBJ come home and score a touchdown. Shaw got his early and now over. Ron, that was a great catch by Demo Odoms. And there's a flag down uh, in the end zone. I think this is going to be for celebration. Wishbone halfback out of high school that Iowa gave a scholarship to and moved him to receiver. And watch him stretch out and make this catch. A good concentration. Offense. And scratch everything. Replay third down. And that was a great catch that uh, won't count. Well, it won't go in the record books, but for all the folks who came down here from Austin to see him play, <laughs> he said, you know, hey, I've made it. It was one of the greatest yeah. catches of my life, even though it didn't count. <laughs> you saw it, folks. He, and you could tell how popular or how badly his teammates wanted him to score coming back to his home state to play because they were all over him in the end zone. But Tim Dwight back in the game here. That's who they're looking for at the end zone. And here's a flag thrown against Texas Tech. Going to have pass interference. The one thing I've seen all this college year, and I, th I think it's got to be addressed by the rules committee. Defensive backs in college football mug the wide receivers all the way down the field, and they have to go to the pro rule. Hit them at five yards, and that's it. Yeah. Spike Dykes is out, and without being a, a lip reader, what Spike is saying is, hey, we've been getting mugged all night, and then you call that on us with uh, 217 left in the ball game. Spike's Tom, let this clock run. <laughs> 14th play of the drive. This thing's been going on so long. You remember where it started? At the one-yard line after Tech had down the punt. So Iowa trying to seal it with a 99-yard drive. That was an hour ago. <laughs> kind of like riding the elevators at our hotel. Take it a while. We left a note in their suggestion box. We think they should add restrooms to them. Hey, you can see every floor. 
This drive started with 9.45 showing on the clock. Dejected Zebby Lethridge on the uh, sideline for the Red Raiders. Full house backfield. Filler bounces it outside at the five. He'll score. Tavian Banks with an outstanding block on the play to get him outside. They're trying to get every kid from Texas to score a touchdown tonight. He's from Waco. yards. What do we have? 14 or 15. 14 plays. Used up 7 minutes and 36 seconds. Robert with the extra point attempt and he's good. So let's go to break and one more look at the touchdown as Rodney Miller scores it and you see the block by Banks on the outside. We'll be right back. Now the last time Texas Tech was shut out 1987 that was a 31 to nothing loss to the Arkansas Razorbacks when Arkansas was still in the Southwest Conference. It's a better football team than they played tonight. No and question. People are looking at this game and trying to evaluate this team. This is a lot better football team than they played tonight. Picked up at the two. This is Stacy Mitchell. Breaks the tackle and another out at the 40 to the 45 and now the 47 yard line. Well, Tim Dwight, I think, has been a difference maker in this one tonight. He does a little bit of everything. He likes to return punts, and he does that very aggressively, as you see on this play. Also likes to cover punts, Mike. He made a great tackle on oh, this, this run. Ran through on the tackle and made a nice tackle, and then he's a good pass receiver, which he shows you. Comes back, snatches the ball out of the air, and makes a big catch. Look at him on the sidelines, 124 all-purpose yards tonight. Six catches of 406, had a 50-yarder just before halftime, and two punt returns for 23 yards. Sonny Ka Cabazos, Cabazos, I beg your pardon, comes into the ball game at quarterback, a lefty senior out of Westlaco. No pass completions on the season. Cabazos, 0 for 3. Zings this one almost complete to McKenzie. Couldn't hold on. Now what about Hansbard? What will the decision be tomorrow? Will he turn pro? Will he come back to Lubbock? Or will it be the ministry? This time tomorrow we'll know that. I tell you, he's been a great example of college football. He terrific really has. Kid. He's a terrific young man and terrific representative for Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. Cavazos right over the middle has it complete and that is DeBuck. Ball is loose but they say he was down at the 47. He took quite a shot. Pass DeBuck. Matt DeBuck is a hitter. And DeBuck being helped by his teammates. In fact the hand goes up. They. Cavazzo said, I'm not sure he knows where he is here. So the training staff comes out on the field. And let's take a look at the, the numbers on Cedric Shaw tonight. Another outstanding performance by him. Ron, he just uh, really made some big moves, made some big runs tonight, ran strong over 100 yards. Got some good blocking out of his fullbacks. Second half, he controlled. They controlled the clock with their running game and credit the offensive line. And Cedric Shaw here, he got two blocks by Tim Dwight on that play and broke it to the outside. 113 yards on 20 carries and one touchdown. We've been doing it for the longest. 
show those 50 or so people that he got tickets for or were not disappointed in, in the performance they got to see tonight. Cavazos sets, throws it a little too low up. They say incomplete. Fourth down, and now Iowa will take it over. Unable to get it done here, and now the celebration has really started. Particularly in the band section, down to the end zone to our right, because the clock shows only a minute and 19 seconds left, and Iowa leading 27 to nothing. This one is history. Well, they may have been embarrassed the last time they came here, but uh, Iowa was certainly not embarrassed tonight. Holiday Bowl tomorrow evening from San Diego, Colorado, and Washington. Grandquist, the ball carrier, he will lose one. And it's Robbie Grandquist. Cartwright defensively who makes the stop. Ladies and gentlemen, the board, staff, and participants of the Builder Square Animal Bowl would like to thank you for attending tonight's game. Your contribution to tonight's excitement is well appreciated. play and to the 45 yard line and that could be the last play of this ball game. Mike as as we wrap this one up tonight I have to say Mark Mitchell the reserve linebacker and special teams player was not here because of the death of his mom Diane and his team dedicating this ball game tonight I have to think was a major inspiration to this football team. They really wanted to win for that family. And Ron our, our prayers are with the family and uh Mark Mitchell. Two seconds and down to one. The final score, Iowa 27 and Texas Tech nothing. Up next, Keith Olbermann and Carl Ravitch with all the latest from the world of sports and sports center. For Kellen Winslow and Mike Gottfried, I'm Ron Franklin. Our congratulations to Hayden Fry and the Iowa Hawkeyes, champions of the 1996 Builder Square Alamo Bowl. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.